Hey, Eli, what you been doing since the last part? Killing babies? Man, I sure love killing babies. Especially little stocky ones that can't run so good. Makes them easy to catch. These ones don't have no eyes, so maybe they can't see that they're walking over the corpses of their brothers and sisters. These guys are mushrooms, so maybe they, maybe they don't have genders, though. They're walking over their shroomkin. Stupid babies. Hey, if someone actually didn't want me to kill them, wouldn't they be doing something about it? It seems like if they had parents, they'd be conscientious enough to protect their ugly children. Honestly, I know if I had such an ugly, fat child, I'd probably not want to be around them either. But part of being a parent is taking care of your ugly, fat, stupid children. There's so many fat, ugly, stupid, blind, dead babies in this forest. I, I know their decaying remains are good for the environment, but honestly. Again, what kind of parent isn't there to protect their fat, ugly, stupid, stinky, blind, dead babies from people passing by in need of a spare 50 souls? How inconsiderate, even, that parents would raise fat, stupid, blind, ugly, stinky, petulant, foul-tasting dead babies whose souls are barely worth enough to trade for five standard arrows. Murdering this entire family is barely worth my time, and certainly not worth the, the viewer's time. But really, I'm doing the world a favor at this point. Ah, anyways, th that's enough of that. Let's get going. Again, terrible parents. Absolutely terrible. Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> now, in case you didn't know, we're heading down to Blight Town today. Oh, I've not been looking forward to this whatsoever. But it's something that must be done. It is something that must be done. And as you can probably tell, and he doesn't say anything new. By the rules. Oh, maybe he does. Oh, yeah, that's right. I went home. <laughs> Your humanity is really and he doesn't have any interest in that. Methods. Most fools have more humanity than they know what to but do. But he wouldn't miss it. Now. Who do you imagine will make the best use of it? You and I. <laughs> because we're evil. And that's the joke. He's a bit too on the nose sometimes. Some people like it, some people don't. It's it's kind of got an okay balance to it, I guess. He certainly... I mean, they kind of do this running joke in every single soul, well, Miyazaki game, anyways. And they're probably most likely going to do the same exact thing in Bloodborne. But as far as he goes, he's pretty spot on the fucking nose about it. The one in Demon Souls, what was his name? I can't remember offhand since I didn't play it, but I did some, <laughs> whatever I was doing research for uh, some of the Trifusion things that I thought more about it. Anyways, uh, but he was a bit, to me, he, he didn't seem quite as on the nose about it to me, but anyways, anyways. Okay, uh, there's a couple of things, let's see, before I get going any further. Uh, I just wanted to show off some of this. Do -do 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 -do. Helm of a Nameless Knight, this is Elite Knight Helm, perhaps an Elite Knight of Astora. Although he was loath to give up on his undead mission, he perished at the Undead Asylum and went hollow. So obviously this is referencing Oscar, even though we found this in the garden. So, apparently someone stripped him naked and then threw him out into the garden, if you want to try to make sense of it. But the more logical explanation is that the developers just did not give a shit. And they didn't want you to have access to it that early or something. Who knows, who knows. But you have to go back to the asylum anyway, so it seems like it would be better if he just dropped it, but... I don't know, I don't know what the fuck's wrong with these people. And there's one more, that's Ferris's stuff I want to show off. Okay, Ferris's hat, I didn't show this off last time. Broad-brimmed hat, favored by the archer hero Ferris. I'm gonna read... Yeah, I'm gonna do it the whole way through. Ferris was an accomplished archer, and though he was human, he ranked alongside Hawkeye Go, one of the four knights of Lord Gwim. His hat is universally popular among children. That it is. That it is. Okay, so children l love fucking this guy or this woman's hat. Ferris was an accomplished archer, and though he, it says he, I think in the original, in the Japanese it might actually use a neutral way of referring to them, which that's a Japanese thing. We don't, in English there are no neutral uh, gender uh, pronouns, or whatever you want to call them. And uh, I think they just kind of took liberty and said it was a he, but really it's, it's not specified either way, I, I think, I want to say that. Uh, but obviously, very accomplished archer. Was it the person that we saw in the, uh, the woods? I will give them credit for this. They didn't say she. Because the one, the, the equipment that you get this off of is a fe female NPC, and that would have been a little bit too much. Whereas, it, since they said he, it kind of does the same thing. 
it makes you wonder, well, I got it off a woman. Does that mean that it was a he? Or maybe it's just something that they're reading into? Who knows? Anyways, pretty good way to handle that, I guess, all things considered. Now, let's come up on Fatty Fatter McFatterton here. Very careful. Actually, do I have... Yeah, let's, let's be a bit more careful than I normally am. I really don't care, usually. And I'll go ahead and mention that you can actually... They drop poop. They drop poop. And I, do I really... Eh, might as well just use the wrong one. Why not? Go over here, fatty. Hope that doesn't alert the other one. Yeah, alert the other one. I am a genius. I'm so good at this. I knew whenever I threw it that it wasn't going to work that way. But I just kind of decided to do it anyways. Anyways, the best way to handle these guys is to backstab them and to parry them. Which is, coincidentally, the way that you handle every enemy in the entire game. Pretty much. I shouldn't say that. There's plenty of enemies that you can't really parry or backstab, but... Ah, I don't care. I'm just gonna be a bitch about it. Caddy old bitch. Just parrying his friend through his other friend. Right into his... Man, they have really broad backsides. Ah! Me no... What the hell happened to him? He kind of just died suddenly. Hmm. I guess the... The... This pure brutality in my mockery... Made him die suddenly of a heart attack. Okay, but we got poop. Let's look at this poop. Let's let's investigate the lore significance of this doo-doo. I love to look at doo-doo, and so do you too. Dung pie. Atrocious fecal waste material. They're straight up about it. It's just, it's shit. It's just a ball of shit. Throw this shit at enemies to build up toxins. Quote-unquote toxins. <laughs> <laughs> but it also builds up your toxicity. I guess because you're holding it in your hand, then later, it's like the smell is still on your hand. Because, you, I mean, there's not many sinks in Lordran, I guess. Although the stink can make it difficult to carry on one's person. <laughs> <coughs> I should have got water. Turning an enemy toxic inflicts high damage over a period of time. Now, they're kind of useful in this area because you can actually use these to inflict uh, toxic on yourself. And that will make it so that the incredibly annoying blow dart archers that will kill me when I get down here, I can I, I can say that with some degree of certainty. Uh, that you can use those to make sure that they cannot actually toxic you any worse than you have toxic yourself. Ooh, that was weird. Can't get over how wide their backsides are. Too much booty in the pants. Okay, now, the magic of Blight Town is the fact that it is so hard not to navigate. There's a lot of valuable things in Blight Town. And by the way, this is normally how you're supposed to exit. You're supposed to pick up the key that's there, which will lead to New Londo. Uh, that's the key to New Londo in that chest. And then you will exit back out, and then you could unlock that door, which would unlock... You know, we unlocked it with a master key. And then you head back up to Firelight. But I never do it the normal way. I've done it a few times the normal way, actually, but it's not... It's not any fun. It's a big pain in the butt. And once I get down there, I should go human so I can get Mildred now that I'm thinking about it. And I think I have enough damage to handle the things that are down here. Surely by now. And just go ahead and drop down. But here we have these guys. These pleasant little fellows. There's lots of weird sort of unearthly creatures that are down here. And if you are just coming up out of Blight Town, then these guys can pose a bit of a pro uh, problem especially. Oh, and here we have these... These are maybe the worst enemies in this area, just because they're such a nuisance. Uh, because they're kind of hard to hit with a lot of weapons. Okay, anyways. Now, the Lord City events of these guys, I have really just no idea. They... <laughs> that's really sexual what's happening. Look, just take a look at it. Does this look like anything to you? It looks... Uh, no, no. Well, let's not... Clitoris is a clitoris. But anyways, yeah, there's a lot of special, special things to explore in Black Town. And I don't like much of any of them. And as you can see, uh, if we can clear out these guys, come on! Uh, 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 okay, oh, there's more, okay. Anyways, you can see this little weird branching tree thing over there. I need to get over to the other side of that to get a, an item or two. And I will go ahead and tell you now that if you try to run across it, you're probably going to fall off. And if you try to creep across it, you are going to fall off as well because of the way that platforming works in this game. 
So kind of just trying to walk across as quickly as possible is the best way to go, but at the same time, I'm probably going to die as a result. But first, we have to worry about this guy, who's one of the toxic blow dart bitches that we're going to have to deal with. There's really not much of a way to deal with these guys. Let me think for a second. Which one was it? Oh, I hope I didn't put away the spider shield, because that is the best one to use. I probably did. That was not good. Come on. No, oh, damn it. But maybe there's something that I can... Ah, uh, shit. That's gonna be a pain in the ass, then. Auxiliary effects, come on, something. Give me some auxiliary effects. Nothing. Nothing at all. Amazing. Okay, so we're going to get the full brunt of experience here with these guys. You can't really block their attacks. You can't really kite them. I mean, you can try to... Oh, I still have combustion equipped. Lovely. Because I was doing shit inside of the Cat Covenant. By the way, I've leveled up quite a bit because... I was kind of dicking around with the Cat Covenant. And as a result... What was I... Oh yeah, I was trying to use a bow. That's what I was doing. Being stupid. Okay. But I was dicking around with the Cat Covenant. And I had a few instances where I was able to get like... Uh, like 72,000 souls or so on from a single guy. You see, he fires so often as well that it's basically impossible to stun lock him. Although you might be able to sort of muck about with the... Yeah, there we go. Okay. Get off. Get off. Get off. Get off. Get off. No, no. Stop it. Stop doing things. Okay, okay. There you go. There you go, sweet. Let's get this poop off there. And these are going to be pretty important down here. I was killing all of those plants, so I've got a few extra of these. But that's what we're going to do. I'm probably just going to just take it in the face whenever we try to handle these guys. Because there's, there's a lot of those guys down here. So quite possibly the easiest thing to do is to just take the toxic early. And I don't have enough dung pies to demonstrate what I was talking about just yet, so we can't do that either. But here they come! Here they come! Lovely, lovely. Oh, for fuck's sake. You stupid little... Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Let's just go. And you notice my health drops very, very quickly. Now that it ha I have been infected with this fucking toxic. The, kind of the plus side is that their attacks don't actually do much of anything to you. Other than, uh... You know, they, they, they don't stun lock you, in other words. So it's not really a big deal. I'll go ahead and use one of these, even though it's a bad idea because of that. <laughs> and see, that's why you don't do that. See, I was demonstrating it for your benefit. That's what I was doing. Actually, I kind of just... I actually was thinking about it, but I was like, eh, fuck it. You notice I had that attitude by a lot... With a lot of things. Of this, eh, I don't care, just do it. Especially whenever I'm, in, whenever I'm recording for some reason. I'm actually a lot more careful whenever I'm not recording. I wonder if I can make this jump. If I don't, I'm going to have a big problem with these dogs. It's a good thing I wasn't running 60 frames a second. I am running at 30, finally. And let me tell you, that really makes things a lot easier. Because now, like, the... I think the first time you saw me running at 30, actually, was... The tail end of the thing with a uh, German spy. Because you'll notice that the jumps... Like, the jump... I tried to make a jump over to the crossbow thing. And I'm just going to go ahead and heal before I go down here. Because these fire dogs are incredibly irritating. Actually, you know what? I'm going to actually be careful for once. Let's be careful. And they may actually run towards the ladder. In which case, I can't actually... Yeah, see... I can't actually aim down quite enough to be able to hit them anyways. I might be able to hit him from this side. See? Yeah, no, no, it's not going to happen. Okay, uh, let's not go that way, though, because there's a lot of those little dickheads. I think, actually, perhaps the easiest way to deal with this is to drop down to the Firekeeper Soul that I need to get anyways. And then after that, it should funnel them to some extent. While I'm thinking about it, using this is probably not a good idea. Let's just use a stock. That way I can raise my shield in the process of doing this. Now, there's quite a few of them down there. So this is going to go very poorly for me very quickly. Where's the other one? Eh, nowhere. Okay. Let's drop down on Sunshine and Dandelion here. Eh, I got one of them. That's good enough. And I'll just attack with my shield up, and that should take care of that. Okay. And that's how you do that. I'm a genius! Firekeeper soul. And I think this one might be generic. Let's read this while I am most certainly going to be attacked. By the way, notice all these Titanite Shards. This is because I was farming primarily the parish area. I was actually talking with Pat, and I introduced Pat in German Spy <laughs> yesterday. And I was wasting a lot of time farming while I, I was listening to them drone on about how awesome both of them are. Stupid little dickheads. Okay, 
Again, this is just a generic soul, nothing special. It's probably here just because FromSoft. They just wanted one here. By the way, because I picked this up, uh, Lawtrek has already done his dirty deed. So I'll have to deal with that once we go back up above. Um, the reason why that this Firekeeper is here, I guess you could construe it as being the one that's linked to the bonfire that's below us. Which would seem to indicate that this area used to be a lot more populated and a lot more important. My best guess. Are they going to turn? Is these... no? Okay. I uh, wonder how... they do breathe fire. That's why they are called fire dogs. Actually, I think their official name is Fire Dogs. Just like the Ren and Stippy cartoon. I think that's right. Now, once we do get over there, I'm going to try to jump over here. That's the reason why I was doing this first. But I'll have to jump over here to be able to get back. And you will notice that these are sort of... This whole area, the Blighttown area... That the whole Blighttown area sort of looks like a... Should I bother equipping? Nah, forget it. I'm not going to bother equipping a fire shield. But this whole area is kind of a drainage ditch for the depths. And actually, if you look at the model viewer, which I will probably do later on, probably in the catacombs, because that's going to be the best instance of trying to show it off. But this this is sort of the same. Th these doors kind of look exactly the same as they do in the depths where we fought the gaping dragon. And these kind of drainage ditch areas are kind of the same as well. So, actually... The physical model of the depths, the Gaping Dragon, I should have showed this earlier, but the Gaping Dragon boss room is actually directly over and sort of inside, actually, because they don't align perfectly, but they're pretty damn close, uh, right above the chest where the new Londo key is. So if it were to, if it were to be logically draining from anywhere, the kind of shit and whatnot that falls out of the depths would drain right down here. And there would probably be a waterfall right here or so. Actually, not quite over here, but more kind of over here where I'm looking right here. So that really nah, doesn't really accomplish anything, me telling you that. But it's, it's, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? No, it's not. Why are you watching then? Why do you insult me with your presence? You, fireman, go in. Okay, and I don't think there's anything down here. For some reason, I always have it in my head that there's a, a soul down here, even though there never is. I have no idea what I'm doing half the time. Okay, a lot of people die in these wheels for some reason. And I'll go ahead and show you that there is a dog down here on this other wheel. He's a cute little dog that's powering the rest of all this shit. Must be have really strong legs, I'll give him that. Uh, one of the uh, producers, developers in the... Really? One of the developers in the radio interviews was very proud of that dog. And I think the person interviewing was actually surprised that he even knew about it. Are you... Come on, really? This is the problem with these guys. You need to have a weapon with a very specific arc just to be able to clear them as quickly as possible. Speaking of clear things as quickly as possible, I really need to be doing that. As quickly as possible, instead of standing around jerking off my mouth. And there's Shiva down there, you can see him already. And I will go ahead and mention that we are not actually out underground. We are not underground. You can look up and you can actually see the sky. Because remember, from the uh, Firelink Shrine, which is right there, you can see the tree. It's right there. You can look down and you can see this area. Remember that giant tree that we saw? Well, here's the roots of the giant tree. And it's not quite in view just yet, but we're going to see it here in a bit. And I'm, for those of you wondering, I'm not going to go down to Ash Lake just yet. I'm probably going to save that for much later. Because that's going to be a quite a big... You know, a mouthful of stuff to talk about in its own right. Oh, come on. Fear my tiny wings. Now, these things, because of their shape, the fact that they have these wings that are obviously vestigial, it could be implying that they used to be these tiny bugs that come out of the ground. And what exactly these tiny bugs are, uh, yeah, I don't really know. But we'll save that for a bit. Let's talk to Shiva. Hello again. Strange to meet away from the clan. Why you are here? How about some equipment? I love collecting these things. But I can only keep so many. And, you know, you are a friend. I'll sell them cheap. The fact that he's calling me a friend is going to make it so hard to kill him later. Because I do need to kill him, because he does drop- By the way, in the past part, I called it an Iron Parma. And I actually thought about it while I was saying it. But it's not called the Iron Parma, it's the Iron Round Shield. I still have- Dark Souls 2 is still infecting my brain in various ways, but it, 
that is the shield that I eventually end up want to you want to use. That's actually in my uh, uh, in my cover art. But we finally get this that I will probably never actually use. Look skyward. Why exactly he gives it? I have no idea. Maybe he's just a skyward sort of guy. Okay. Let's see. We'll be able to farm flamberches later. We don't need that. We can get stone great swords anywhere. Demon great machete. I'm pretty sure those are also dropped. Chotels. Hmm. I can't remember if... Does he drop one or not? Eh, I really don't. I'm not going to kill him right away either way, so it's not really that important. Demon swords are dropped on their own. Demon's great axes are a bit more difficult to come by. Actually, I'll just go ahead and show all the descriptions for all of them. Demon spears are th something that we're going to find in uh, Anor Londo from these Batwing demons. The weapons are these Chaos demons they're referred to. So I'll just point that out. The fact that they are supposedly Chaos demons. Which, for some reason are infesting and sort of serving within the confines of Anor Londo. So that's a bit unusual. Uh, I guess I'll, sa I'll save a lot, the majority of speculation on most of these for later. Uh, claw, generic thing. The, the claws and fists in this game, someone has to show off this... Uh, how do you say it? Sastus or Chaostus? I, I don't know, specifically. But the glove weapons, the fist, the fist weapons in this game. All the fist-based weapons are really terrible. Which I kind of appreciate on one hand, but on, on the other hand, if you're going to do that, why even have them? But anyways, a preferred weapon of the spooks of an eastern land. Whenever they say spooks, they're basically saying, like, uh, not quite assassins, but, you know, lurkers, thieves, that sort of things. They use this word a lot. It's used in uh, reference to also, uh, well, not specifically Griggs, but the implication is, is Griggs as well. Because he wears the black uh, mage outfit. But uh, they are from Vinheim, so this is sort of a universal word. It's not specifically spooks from a specific land. Uh, Demons Great Ace, we'll find that later. No special power, blah, blah, blah. From Taurus Demons. We actually could have got that from the Taurus Demon that we fought is the first boss fight, but he didn't drop it, that catty bitch. Katana, Forge, and Eastern Land, and Eastern Special, but extremely long. Nothing special there. Stupid ass washing pole. I guess I'm fucking sick of looking at those things. Uh, no, for brisk slashing motions, because we can cause bleeding. I don't think any of these actually have anything. Okay, this one actually is interesting. Created by Arster, Earl of Kareem. Requires great skill to wield, but evades shield defense to sneak and damage. This actually is, it looks like a silly weapon, but this actually is a real weapon. And it was made for the sake of making a swinging motion and going over someone's shield. Like they're raising their shield. They're trying to protect their your face, and you do a huge overhand motion and try to pull the uh, kind of curved area that you know you can see. You can look at the damn thing until it works, but it curves over the length of the shield, and you're trying to hit them in the head is what you're doing. So that's the idea with this. Although you would actually have to try in real life, whereas this one you can just rush at someone swinging, tapping R1, and you'll evade their shield entirely. Uh, but these are used by Lotric. You can kick him in Firelink, and he'll stand up, and you can see that he uses two of them. and Which doesn't really make a lot of sense using two of them, but whatever. But uh, whenever he introduced himself, he introduced himself as being Lotric of Kareem. So this is a Kareem-based weapon. And the Kareem people, not too happy little buddies. They're just not pleasant people. Demon Great Machete, and with no particular magic. We'll see the lesser Capra Demons. The, the Capra Demon that came with the two dogs that we fought in the Lower Undead Burg. This is something that I think he could have dropped one. Hmm. I don't know if he actually has the, a drop rate for it, but things like him drop it later on. We already have this. And the Flamberge is nothing special. And again, Flamberge is, is its own weapon. Undulating Brain, Choice One, Slithering Serpent, blah, blah, blah. Now, why he has all these, who can say? You can supposedly only get those Flamberges from the Snake Men in Sin's Fortress, so apparently he has been the Sin's Fortress, apparently? I don't know. Or maybe... And the Sin's Fortress little snake men, they're actually a reference from uh, Kingsfield, and that's the reason why they're in the game. They really don't really have much of a place in this game, honestly. But they're supposedly, they're creations of Seath, which is something if you play Dark Souls 2, you're probably as sick as I am, is hearing that shit. If something is weird, uh, Seath made it, or Aldia made it. I guess I'll, I really hate it whenever they do. Like the Force in Star Wars, everything revolves around it, it explains everything. Anyways, we don't need anything from him quite yet. And his buddy, we can, we could, in theory, go ahead and kill him now. And that would allow us to have... Actually, I think he drops quite a few things. But... It, no, wait. No, 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 no. 
I, we'll, we'll see later, but we'll actually get this outfit that he's wearing up there. Which also doesn't make a lot of sense. But Dark Souls, Dark Souls. Now, as you can see, there's all sorts of shit all over the place. This is all shit. Every last bit of it. Every last bit of it is poop. Some of it's poison. No, shut up. It's, it's all poop. It's all poop. And there's a lot of, uh... Oh, I should have upgraded my Pyromancer's Flame. Oh, I've already grinded enough. I probably wouldn't have been able to generate enough souls for that. But there's a lot of items that we need to pick up. But first, we're going to go down here, and we are going... Should I go ahead and turn... I'll collect a few things before I do that, actually. But I will go ahead and light this bonfire. And collect it. Yeah, collect the dragon scale below here. Now, I'm going to try to rush through as much of this as possible. Let's go ahead and light it. Just for the look. Just light it. Go back here and uh, grab this. And you can actually drop down all the way from the upper levels into this area that we're in right here. You can't quite... I really wish that they would allow the camera to tip more up. Anyways, dragon scale down here. For some reason, it doesn't really make any sense. It's just sort of here. But, ah, oh, we can't look up. But you can't... There's some, like, girders and things above us that... I'll be able to look at it whenever we're looking down later on. And I'll go ahead and tell you that this is probably going to be an, uh... Oh, so we have visitors. We have visitors. <sighs> Fuck's sake. But this is probably going to be like a two or three part thing trying just to get through Blight Town. And it's probably going to be a while before I can even get over to, uh... What's her face? Uh, <laughs> uh Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Before we get over to her. Uh, so it's going to be a while. Because there's so much shit to pick up. And again, I am a completionist. I could just run through and go to her right away, but... What would be the point of that? Not showing off anything. Alright. But you don't want to spend too long inside the water because obviously it poisons you. And there are a few set little paths that you can go down. Yeah. Go ahead and die. Now, they should... Here we go. Okay. Did I see? Yeah, there we go. Okay, you see those two little bugs popping up? That is their spawn area. They kind of just appear. Once you kill these two, two more will show up. And they kind of just keep coming. Just They kind of just keep coming, just like me. And, you know what, might as well. I'm going to get invaded doing this, but I really don't care. Let's go ahead and reverse hollowing. I got quite a few humanity because I was actually healing within the Cat Covenant area. I didn't really mean to get over 10, but, you know, that's the only way to heal whenever they're spamming Estus. Because that's how it works in this game. So this is something I had to deal with. Anyways. And it's odd that there's actually grass growing here, still. You go away. Is that, you saw that there's grass actually growing here. They're, I guess they're kind of reeds. Oh, okay, there she is. Okay, this is what I want, and let's go ahead and get over here first. And she shouldn't be too much of a problem. Although, if you're not really well outfitted, she can actually deal quite a bit of damage, and she has a fair amount of health, I guess, herself. And I'll go ahead and tell you, everyone that has been around the Souls community probably knows this. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. But you can tell she... For fuck's sake. Really? I'm terrible at this today. Oh, here. Has some friends. I can't dick around with you just yet. She doesn't have a lot of poise because she doesn't wear much armor. <sighs> Fucking mosquito. I know I should have cleared these mosquitoes beforehand. Go on. I'm actually... There we go. Okay. Well, that kind of ruins things with you, doesn't it? You can go ahead and... Oh, that's nice of you. Here's one for you, too. Actually meant to kick her, but oh well. Anyways, this man eater Mildred. We'll see her later. Presumably as a summon, if I can get over there without being infected too much. Let my poison die down. And go ahead and tell you the story. She is actually sort of a reference to uh demon souls because they're sort of similar enemies enemies. What the fuck's wrong with me? Enemies there. Pick this up. Humanity acquired, and then pick up humanity and a butcher's knife. There we go. Okay, this is what I'm looking for. Uh, but she's sort of a reference to that. And the, the actual butchers, like the butchers that we saw earlier, those was, those originally were the real enemies uh, that had that reference. And during the course of development, one of the developers thought it would be cute to put on the sack and sort of cosplay as one of these things. It's this overweight a female character. Overweight. <laughs> but, you know, pudgy, I guess, whatever. And, uh... Go ahead and show it, why not? And, uh, they... They thought it was so amusing that they ended up making a character based off his little antics uh, that during his uh, their alpha tests, I guess. And uh, that's the reason why that she's here now. 
And again, the her, the she that uh, Laurentius was referring to earlier is referring to the butchers down there. And has always, the fact that she's here was a added later on. So it's, it's not a reference to her. I know some people get really angry about that. For some reason, I don't even understand why people are so insistent that it's her. But anyways. I mean, she's even down here in Blight Town. She has nothing to do with those guys up there. And people still flip out and say, no, it was her. And you question, why do you think that? And they never have an answer. It's just, well, I just want to believe it. People, ever so often you'll go down the comments of these videos and you'll see someone that has, I'm not going to name names or point out examples or anything, obviously. But sometimes I'll read some of these things and some of the theories are just batshit insane. And just after like five seconds of analysis, I can already pinpoint various things. It's like, no, that's completely wrong because of all these reasons. But people still believe it. And for some reason, the people that are like that always state them in the most matter-of-fact way. Like, no, because this. And it'll be completely wrong. Which is really concerning because, you know, what the fuck? What the fuck, guys? Anyways, Butcher Knife. Giant Butcher Knife wielded by the undead man-eating cook lurking in the depths. Again, she's related, sort of, to the Butchers. More a tool for subduing and preparing live catches than an actual weapon. Those <laughs> for subduing. <laughs> Those who have faced this deadly blade have a deeper sense of how helpless prey must feel. Now, it's not, this is not quite the same in Dark Souls 2. It's a lot more fun in Dark Souls 1, prim primarily because of the fact that you have the R2. This is the R1, and this is the R2. Oh, I love that. I'm going to get you, kids. Come back here, you little mushroom guys. I'm going to get you. I should use these on those guys later. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. Oh, actually, hold on. Two-handed is, again, just that. We saw that earlier. And this, the sort of two-handed boom that sort of thing. It's kind of a useful weapon in PvP in a way. It's a good strength-based weapon. Its moveset is not, you know, incredibly reliable for anyone that's paying attention. Although, for me, since my, again, my connection's so terrible anyways, what, what does it actually matter? I'm not going to win either way. Which was a recurring theme when doing the Cat Covenant Innovations. I, whenever I actually fought someone legit, I couldn't really do anything to them because they would swing at dead air, like, ten feet away from me, and I would just die in one hit. Because, again, Cat Covenant especially has, uh, no, le uh, well, it does have level restrictions. Cat Covenant, you cannot invade people that are below your level beyond the ordinary uh, co-op range. I'll go ahead and point this out. If you jump, actually, if you try to jump over the water, you'll get uh, poison uh, build up anyways. So, trying to jump over it is not really going to do anything. God, I hate these fucking mosquitoes. So approaching out. And this is probably the best path that you can go to be able to collect everything. If you want to kind of be overly anal about this. Ah, here we go. Here's a guy. Actually, I might as well just try to take care of him. I will say that the uh, the host tends to... Ah, never mind. <laughs> that the host tends to have some sort of advantage in some cases. Because, uh, you know, you're playing to their connection speed. And they really don't have anything to worry about as far as their... Really? Come on. And they really don't have anything to worry about themselves. Usually, the invader spawns Kind of in the middle of the swamp area. But I don't see him just yet. Come on, hurry up. I don't have time for you. Okay, there he is, there he is. This one. Alright, let's try to engage him, get myself killed over here. Hello! Wonder if he'll be an asshole and just attack me outright. Ever so often you'll get those guys. Hello, Green Reaper man with probably a maxed out Great Scythe. He's probably going to, uh... Oh, wonderful. He's a Green Blossom user as well. This is going to be fun. I kind of get the impression that he's attempting to dead angle me, if you remember me talking about that. I'm not hitting him, but it could just be because of poor aim or invincibility frames or by connection. I can't really tell. He's obviously attacking places where I'm not actually standing. <laughs> I really shouldn't be playing with combustion, but right now I'm kind of just more curious about my connection. And seeing what the hell it's doing. I, don't, I can never really tell what the hell's happening because of my connection. I don't know, this is strange. Because I can't really... Yeah, and he's still hitting me. I don't know. 
But that's the, the problem with invasions, as far as I go, because my connection is not quite stable enough. So I kind of mysteriously will take damage sometimes, and then other times I'll do damage to, to people that I probably shouldn't have done damage to, and so on. It's just really bizarre. Anyways, got that out of the way. And he did do me sort of a favor in getting rid of my humanity, so I don't have to worry about getting it invaded while I'm trying to explain all this shit. Oh, really? Okay. I was afraid I was going to get poisoned. Now I have to wait for the poison buildup to go away. Poison really is not a big deal. The intent of this area is that you're probably going to have a constant damage over time. And at least they made it poison based, like it wasn't just a constant miss that was unavoidable. So you can avoid it. In the sense that you can kind of carefully traverse the area. But the, you know, the obvious intent is that you're supposed to uh, be taking damage constantly through this entire area. Because it is supposed to make you miserable. Okay. But I think I'll go over here and... Da -da 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 -da. Should I use something new? Let's use the Merc. Oh. Really, I, mm, the moveset on this weapon isn't particularly great. Especially not for PvP. But as an actual, just ordinary weapon, it's, it's pretty good. It has pretty good damage, especially for a dex weapon. And I'm going to attract them, and I'm going to attract these stupid mosquitoes. So this is going to escalate very quickly. Go away. Oh, it actually still hit me. You sassy bitch. Make sure I don't get hit by them. And they can do this rolling attack. Come on, both of you line up. There you go. That's what I want. And you go ahead and do that. Okay. For crying out loud. And you can't, you obviously can't parry these boulders. So I wouldn't try doing that. And they have a lot of uh, invulner invulnerability frames during the course of a lot of these attacks. So you have to be pretty careful. They're not overly dangerous, but they can do quite a bit of damage if you're like that. Like I, huh. See, that, even that didn't kill him. But they can do quite a bit of damage if you're not paying too much attention. Which normally I am not. It is pretty funny watching him roll that thing around, though. Now, whether that's an actual boulder, maybe it's a big pile of their dung. Who can say? Who can say? But here's some dung as well. They drop dung, like, every single time that you kill them, almost. It's like that other one did not drop it, but it is pretty consistent. And they will also, in addition to the ones up there, drop a large club. Which is almost the same exact thing as uh, this great club that we just got through getting. Great club. Giant tree branch serves as a wooden club. Smashes enemies from ups <laughs> from upside the head. This leaping attack is a trademark of clubs, and this giant club is no exception. Let's go ahead and show this off. Oh, I can actually use it one-headed. That's nice. R1. Into, it kind of just does this. This is actually a pretty good PvP weapon, to be honest. And I think mainly the reason why it's considered to be a good PvP weapon, you have this, then you have its R2. That's the large club that I'm thinking of that has what I'm thinking of. Okay, but you can do the R1. Does it have the old? Yeah, it does that. Okay. And that's kind of what people like to do with uh, these clubs. They like doing these uh, rolling attacks. It might be this one. Yeah, okay, this one. That's what I was thinking of. The, uh, the R2, the two-handed one is actually pretty good as well. But this one has a lot of clearance space, so it's pretty useful. It has high damage, and it obviously has a very wide range of attack. So that's the reason why people like to use it. Uh, I'll use it for a little bit. I'm probably not going to be using it much past this, though. So kind of get that out of your system. And I'll go pick up the soul for that later. And I'll probably record that in another part once I have the Pyromancy Flame completely upgraded. Okay, Eli from the... No, shut up. Shut up, you. I'm taking over from this point. He was about to say that... If that invader had been carrying around a plus 10 or pyromancy flame, then Quelana would have appeared, but he did... I'll go ahead and spoiler warning for you. Uh, but she actually does not appear, so he didn't have one. And that's the end of that story. I'm taking over from here because the quality of the commentary, in my opinion, gets really poor from this point on. Because I don't really talk much about the, the lore or significance of anything going on here. I just kind of end up getting irritated that I'm having to go through this area and avoid all the poison and whatnot. And I get kind of in a bad mood and I just start complaining about that. But here we have the tighter cloth blah blah blah. And more importantly the pyromancy poison mist. This, uh, the, well the tatter cloth anyways, is something that you can get from these one of these starting classes. The poison mist specifically is something that is... It, it, well, we'll read the description here in a bit after I get through 
handling these dumb little mosquito things. Which I'll, I'll, you know, I'll give him this. Past Eli this. Everything in this area is very distracting and very annoying. Many times throughout this, I end up uh, getting distracted or I'm trying to read something and I just keep getting interrupted. Very irritating. So it's understandable why he was a bad boot. Okay, Poison Mist. Unique Pyromancy crafted by Yunji. Considered a heretic even at the Grape Swamp. And she became a egg-bearing undead who serves a deformed young girl who speaks in an unintelligible tongue. Now, uh, of course, if you do not know about the Fair Lady yet, then I guess this could be considered as being a hint that she exists in the first place. Although, there are plenty of people in the item descriptions that you never actually see in-game, so what purpose does that serve, you know? But, uh, I will mention that even though we're not going to see them in this part, um... MG and the Pale Lady and Quelag are all very closely tied to Blighttown itself. And here we, like, see for example here. Blighttown obviously is in decay now, like these stone walls have fallen down. So, it's obvious that this, it's sort of been built up over time, these walls that kind of surround it. So it has been contained at some point, and it seems to have been fairly long ago. So that's sort of your first hint that what happened to Blighttown was probably something that happened well before MG even arrived in the first place. Although that is not... <clears throat> this, that is not quite for certain. The problem with that is... I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you. Most likely, FromSoft never actually finished the concept behind this area's... You know, they never finalized the story. And I'll go into that more later once we actually get to the Fair Lady. And uh, Quilog specifically. Because uh, they kind of designed a lot of Blight Town's backstory and uh, the Chaos Area's uh, backstory around the existence of the uh, Chaos Covenant. But so much of that changed, as in who gives you the, the Chaos Covenant, you know, who you enter into a contract with and so on. So much of it actually changed, and here was the large Titanite Shards. This is the reason why I would come down here. I know that the ones up in the depths actually drop once as well, but their drop rate is abysmally, abysmally low. So I tend to just come down here. Like, I actually attempted to farm some up there, but they just were not dropping. But anyways. Uh, so much of that actually changed that, as a result, the, uh, this whole area kind of seems like it was lost in limbo. Like, the logic of it was lost. Uh, a lot of people assume that NG is the one that is responsible for what happened to Blighttown. And that could be the case, but his descriptions about why he was considered to be a heretic is because of the things that he was doing within the Great Swamp, which is not a place that's in An Orlando. It's a place that's external to An Orlando. Although some of the item descriptions kind of mislead you into thinking that Blighttown itself used to be the uh, Great Swamp, which is not the case. But anyways, again, uh, it's really tied closely to... Uh, the Witch of Isleth and, you know, the fact that the witches were the ones that pioneered uh, pyromancy, and the fact that pyromancy itself used to be a form of sorcery, which was tied very closely to the concept of life. You know, it's, it's in opposition to Nito, the concept of death. So, whenever you create something like Poison Mist or Toxic Mist, it is somehow a corruption of fire, and by extension, somehow a corruption of life. And here we picked up the server, which, actually, is this real? Yeah, I think it is a, its own weapon. Okay, anyways, let's take a look at this first, and I think I tried to use this in a second. But it's not a great weapon, this, this thing. Uh, it actually, I'll just go ahead and read the description. A curved great sword used in the mysterious ancient rite, imbued with a frightful occult energy, which restores health points with each hit. We'll see more about occult stuff later, but again, it is... Occult stuff is made usually by human sacrifice. Like whenever you... Occults... Th this is a really weird uh, way of looking at it, but... Uh, occult is something that actually is a very threatening thing to the gods. Like whenever you make something that's occult that does... Uh, bonus damage to gods as far as gameplay goes. But like things in the Pandu world were locked up for being occult. And whenever you make something that is occult... It is made through human sacrifice. And here I go up to this tree just to demonstrate the fact that it's made of stone. It's not really tree bark, exactly. Now, even if you rub your face up against it and start licking it, some, mm, I love you, arch tree, then you'll just taste the cold, cold, gritty taste of stone and not uh, specifically tree bark. 
Although the extensions that kind of grow out of it do seem to have been infected, possibly, by this sort of uh, Asgard world that we live in. And as a result, it kind of becomes infected with life. And uh, as a result, the trees that are above can live and die. Whereas the as you further down you go, it just becomes nothing. Like, if you could actually see the... And I was trying to demonstrate the moveset here. Uh, but the that was the R2. And it's very, very slow, which is the reason why I don't really like using it. And I'll demonstrate a little bit more about that later, I believe. But the, uh, yeah, if you could actually see a tree, its roots growing down into the kind of abyss level area, I'm not sure what exactly you would see, because we don't ever really see much of the abyss, other than the fact that it's just a giant black void. And I'll go ahead and pick this up. I'll point this at This is actually a pretty good time to start talking about this, but this is the plank shield. I think at some point in development, actually, this is like one of the very first shields that you could come across if you started without one. So they wanted to make sure that it was available at this point. And I don't think there's anything particularly special about its item description, but I'll go ahead and look at it anyways, I think. If I'll go to it, come on, you miserable fuck. I know you're in a bad mood, but go. All right, makes it shift shield built from wood planks. Provides minimal protection, but at a cost of something, something about nothing. Because it didn't really have much of a lower significance at all. Anyways. Go ahead and tell you you can roll through this wall. Pick up some twin humanities here. And there's a wall past this one that you can also knock down. And that will lead to Ash Lake. Which we will not go to just yet. Even though usually I will go down and pick up the Chloranthi ring. And then come back later. Because the Chloranthi uh, ring is pretty useful. But in this case I decided. You know what since that would be kind of. You know it would. I just want to have everything in one part anyway. So I'll just avoid doing that. All these little things are kind of really disrupting me. And I think uh, here I start trying to demonstrate the server's moveset. And the uh, problem with the server is, even though it's a long weapon, it looks remarkably long, uh, it has very short range. And it has a big wind-up. Like, you can see him, whenever he initiates an attack, he has to lift it over his shoulder onto kind of the other shoulder and then bring it back down. Which, which you know, in terms of game speed, you know, it's still like 0.7 seconds or something. But... Uh, you need all the speed you can get whenever you're using these kind of weapons. And especially with something... They kind of do this because it's a, uh, a cross-hit weapon. Like, you're going side to side. Like, the S-Doc that I was using earlier, that's not really something you should be using in PvP unless you're using lock-off. And in my case especially, I shouldn't be using a thrusting weapon in PvP because it's so easy to miss with them whenever the other guy is technically not even at the place that you're even swinging anymore. But in regards to the server, it's just not a great weapon because it's the ex it doesn't extend well, like its reach is very small, it has a big wind-up, and that's all because it only it restores like 7 health points, I think, whenever you actually use it. Like whenever you hit an enemy with it, then it absorbs 7 health points. And I'm demonstrating here the Ring of the Evil Eye actually absorbs 30 health points whenever you kill someone with it. So, if you, like, if you look at my health, I think I have, like, 900 and something health. Not quite a thousand. Yeah, 938 health. And, uh, in terms of, like, hitting... If you get if you get hit by anything, you're probably going to lose, like, 100 health or something. So imagine the amount of times that you would have to hit an enemy with the server. Or the Butcher's Knife, which uh, brings back 5 health, I think, and the server brings back 7. Uh, whenever you do that, then it's going... It's not really going to do much of anything in terms of helping you. It's really the Ring of the Evil Eye, which, if you're concentrating on trying to play that way, that's going to do the most good. I've tried in the past to make a, a build. Like, you could see an empty slot whenever I had to reload the game in the previous part. Uh, that's from a, a test character that I was running where I was trying to see if you could actually make a build around this. Where you could just stack huge amounts of armor and just plow through things trying to regain health. It doesn't really help. The, this weapon specifically does not really help. It's really the ring that does all the work, and the fact that it's restoring, like, 7 health is offset by a large degree by the fact that the weapon itself is so mediocre. And my play really gets messy here, just because I'm so... Blighttown, the thing about Blighttown is you have to be very patient as you're going through. Not, you know, it's not really that dangerous, exactly. The enemies are not dangerous at all. Uh, but th they are very numerous, and primarily the most dangerous part of Blighttown is the fact that you can fall off of things so easily. And I think here I realized that I had never... I remember this later. I think it is much later that I finally realized that I had never gone up top to get the, uh... Uh... The... 
fuck's sake. There's something sorcerer. The banishment sorcerer. The banishment sorcerer's set. That's not what it's called, but that's what I'm like to refer to it as. I also I like, I pointed out here, I like the fact that the bonfire, the idea is that you're sitting next to it and gaining sort of radiant health from it. Like, you're not actually drinking Estus, but you're gaining the radiant health that's coming from the Estus that's part of the bonfire. And it's you're just sitting there for quite a long time, so that's why things vanish and reappear that people complain about sometimes. And I like the fact that if you sit down next to it, those monsters are just like, Oh, you sat down, we can't do anything now. This is bullshit. And I start talking about the war pick here. Some people were saying that it's a good weapon because of its counter damage rating. Which, yeah, it does have a high counter damage rating. But th the problem with it is that it has a huge windup, and just like the server, it has a very short range. Now, I mean, you can use it as a counter weapon, but whenever you're making a counter weapon, it needs to be something that has a pretty long reach. And that's because for counter damage to work, you have to be hitting someone while they are in their attack animation. So either you are face fucking someone and taking a hit using a high amounts of armor in the first place, uh, so that you're triggering that bonus damage, or you are uh, uh, trying to wait for the exact moment at which they uh, have finished their attack animation and they're technically still in that attack animation. Then you can hit them and do bonus damage as well. So it's good to have something that has a very long reach. If you have something with short reach, odds are you're probably going to be within their attack, or the, you know, the boundary of their attack animation in the first place. And if you're not, you're probably behind them, in which case, it doesn't really matter if you have something with a high uh, counter rating, because you can probably just backstab them. So that's the reason why the war pick is kind of a bad weapon, in addition to the fact that it has kind of cruddy uh, base damage and poor scaling and whatnot. Although some people like it just because it looks neat, and that's, you know, that's fair, you can play the game however you want to. The Lucerne also has a uh, pretty good counter damage rating, and it is long range, and people like using it with the Leo ring, so it can also be stacked just like the War Pick, because it has piercing damage. So whenever you're talking about the difference between these two weapons, I would just go with the Lucerne. Okay, anyways, there's a couple things I lost in the process of talking about this. But uh, as far as the NG goes, I'll talk more about that later, about uh, how everything changed in regards to the Covenant. Uh, yeah, the, the uh, uh, Chaos Covenant. This little asshole hit me on the way down. And I think he actually, he runs, he somehow gets past me, and I can't quite figure out how he did it. But he gets, it, this toxic drains very, very quickly, I'll point out. And this is, I don't die here. I do die up above uh, later, and I die in a very peculiar way that I want to point out later. But somehow this little toxic guy gets past me, I can't quite figure out how he did it. But anyways, uh, I want to talk more about the uh, chaos stuff later. So I'll say that for the part after this one. Uh, and that will be more about the kind of attempt at trying to rationalize the history of Blackdown. He, the po toxic guy is supposed to be up here, but somehow he... I don't know, he didn't fall off. He just kind of vanished. I'm, I'm even watching this. I'm still not sure where the hell he is. He's, I mean, I'll come back up and he'll be on, on this uh, level, but... I don't know. Anyways... <clears throat> but there's a couple of things I also wanted to talk about. There was something else I, again, kind of lost in the process of talking. But I can't quite remember what it was. Anyways, um, a couple of things from the previous part I wanted to bring up, though, that I have in my notes. One is that in the prior parts, uh, we picked up the wolf ring, and I just wanted to point out that there was a corpse. There, see, there he is. Somehow he got up there. I mean, I was just on here. We didn't see him. And I come back up, and there he is. It's like he had somehow magically teleported up above the level, you know, above us. Or he dropped down and then climbed back up the ladder, and I just didn't see him in the brief instance in which I was up. I don't know. Anyways. But a corpse did have that ring. Who exactly that corpse belonged to, I don't know. And any time that you find a corpse, you don't really know if it was an undead or not. They really make a mess of trying to rationalize that. And I'll point out uh, that a lot of areas in Blacktown kind of become irritating because they like putting enemies right on top of areas that you are kind of choked into having to go into, and you don't have any room to dodge, and you know you you get attacked as soon as you come up ladders and things like that. They really this is just a really shitty place. Anyways, I'm <laughs> falling into the same trap I did last time, and I'll drop down here and show off the uh, where you can find the whip, which is not a great uh, weapon in the game. Uh, actually, it's later on. Yeah, it's up here. Sorry. Anyways. 
But well, who exactly that person was that had the wolf ring, we don't really know. And this is when I realized that I never picked up that shit. And I don't think I go back for it just yet. Um, but the... It could have been someone that was on the look at how I noticed the guy shooting me here. Uh, and he somehow dies, and I think that it's the guy up, up above. I'll talk more about that in a second. But it could have been a guy that was on the lookout for anyone that was actually on his way to Sif. And the fact that he's stationed in an area in which you can enter Ulusil by two different paths, or maybe go through that garrison area that we were in that the Moonlight Butterfly guy was in, um, it could have been someone that was on the lookout that entire time and had just died at his station. And that was the reason why that there were... Here's the, the whip. This is how you get it. It's a piece of shit. I'll go ahead and tell you now. It has kind of poor damage and it has a very bad moveset. It looks okay, but, you know, it's just kind of one of those things. Mainly you use it for hilarious YouTube compilations which are whipping people in very sexy scenes. Usually offset to Monster Hunter Quest or whatever the hell it's called at the same time. Yes, I remember that video. It was hilarious. No, I'm not even going to link it. Fuck you guys. You go find it. You try to make sense out of what I'm saying. But it's possible that could have been got someone that had just so, that just so happened to be in charge of uh, keeping the lookout or something. We can only really say. Uh, there are old stairs leading up to him that have crumbled away. So obviously it was something that at some point had been constructed for some sort of purpose. So that's my best guess as to why that corpse is there. Try to make the sense out, any sort of sense out of it that you can on your own. I don't know. And another thing I just wanted to mention, sort of briefly, uh, the idea with the church itself, the, you know, the Church of Thorland Waywipe, is that they're being used by Gwyn to extend the era of the gods without realizing it. Humans hunting humans. And I bring that up just because Miyazaki is really obviously in love with this idea. He did it in Demon Souls. See, it, you can't repost with this whip. I was just trying to show this off. And you can't backstab with it either. So just not great. Uh, and I almost get myself killed trying to heal behind this uh, corner here. But uh, the, the, the big fatty McFatterton hits me through the corner. Flips right through the wall. Anyways. Um, but in Demon Souls, that was one of the running themes. Is that the, the people that are in service to the church trying to hunt down evil are actually... Uh, this kind of the same thing as the evil that they're hunting because they both use the same power under different names and He kind of again tries to do this with the concept of gods and humans and the fact that the church is in service to the gods When their actual enemy is probably the gods because the gods are the ones that are kind of afflicting them They're the ones that are hunting them down and you know, they, they are their actual enemies. Gwyn is lives in fear of uh, uh, Gwen lives in fear of the idea that a an era of dark is coming, and he's trying to extend his own era, the the era of the gods, the era of fire. And here's where I die, because I go up here looking for this toxic guy, thinking, well, he's he might be dead, and I actually don't die to him. I die because this little lizard guy falls off, and somehow I take damage from it. I think I can't even tell if that was really a, an attack. I think it might have been. But he ends up attacking me as I'm coming up the ladder, which I really probably couldn't prevent it anyways, honestly. And somehow that kills me, and the guy actually toxics my dead body as I'm falling down to the ground. So a double fuck you. I I do end up uh, picking up the, the souls and everything off camera, so don't worry about that, guys. I know that you treasure my self-humanity. But I decided to just go up here while I'm thinking about it and uh, pick up this shit that I had forgotten about. Because I was in a very bad mood at this point. I really, I don't really have much trouble with Black Town usually, because usually, like most areas that I've said before, I just run through it and pick up things uh, and don't really worry too much about the enemies, because I'm in a rush to try to get through as much as possible. But again, I, the fact that I'm trying to show things off, and often through this playthrough I've actually kind of not really intentionally died, but I've intentionally increased the risk of myself dying just to try to show things off. Anyways, it's probably just John's anyways. Just, I die. If I die, I die. I'm not really worried too much about it. Anyways, I just wanted to point out that Miyazaki tried that again. In this game, with the whole idea of gods and humans and the church. But it didn't really work out quite the same way. And I always got the impression that Miyazaki was kind of disappointed with Dark Souls. Not, you know, not ashamed of it or anything. 
but that it was kind of an unfinished concept, that there were so many things in this game that he didn't quite get right. And I'm pointing this out, you can't run across this, you can't really walk across it, you kind of just have to walk normally, and be very, very careful about it. Otherwise, you can get yourself killed very, very easily. And that was very dangerous and foolish of me to even attempt that without picking up my stuff. But, you know, it is what it is. I was in a bad mood, and I... It's just whatever, fuck it. I was kind of in that sense of mind. Okay, this is the Sorcerer Remedy. I start to try to talk about it, and immediately bugs show up. And again, I think I was screaming at the screen at this point or something. I don't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> I'm even such a bad mood that I can't navigate the menus. Uh, remedy. Sorcery of the Red Robe Yolva. Volva. <laughs> One of the sealers of New Orlando. Reduce bleeding and poison buildup and blah 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 blah. One of New Orlando's unique healing sorceries. Perhaps she abandoned her sealer duty to take her healing arts back to Blighttown. So there are three sealers, as you have seen in my cartoon. As you've seen in the cartoon. There are three of these guys dressed up in red. Uh, the guardians of uh, New Orlando. And we only see two of them. One is Ingward, whom we have not met just yet. The second is Yolva here, that we have just found, you know, their corpse. And the uh, third is one that we never meet and we don't know their name or gender or anything about them. They just vanished. There's no hint of where they went or what they did or why they did it. But Yolva seems to have left because she wanted to try to heal Blighttown. So, at some point... It's not clear if Blighttown became the way that it is because, uh, or it became the way it is after what happened to Londo also happened, or before. But either way, this was her motivation, trying to come here. Well, we, we finally get the Crimson set as well as the Tin uh, Catalyst thing. I think I, it's been a while since I've read this. But. Catalyst of the Banishment Sorcerers who flooded New Londo to seal off, to seal off, seal off away? Oh, God. The Dark Race and the Kings who fell to Dark. In contrast to the, uh, the other catalyst, the metal catalyst qualifies as a weapon, as it inflicts physical damage, however small. Blah, blah, blah. Now, why they exactly they were referred to as being the Banishment Sorcerers, I was trying to speculate here. But it is an unusual name. Uh, you can refer to them as being the Banishment Sorcerers because they banish the uh, Dark Race. Or they seal them up, and you can look at it that way. You can, they are associated with healing. Like, before, apparently, they were the people that were in charge of sealing off New Londo. They apparently may have been in charge because they were attempting to heal all the people that had been afflicted with the dark or something like that. Can't really say. Uh, Crimson Robe, Robe of the Sorcerers who flooded the New Londo Seal of the Dark Race, and the Four Kings who descended into the Dark, the Sealers were once known as Healers. And the Bright Crimson was a symbol of that. So... You could also say that they were banishment sorcerers because they were banishing diseases or something. Who knows? It's not really clear either way. But they were associated with healing. They were associated, of course, with their job of protecting New Londo from the dark. Who exactly gave them that job, I don't know. Because by that time, the kings had already fallen into dark. Which means that maybe they just gave themselves the job. Or maybe there was someone else that gave them the job. Maybe they... It's, it's almost implied from what Ingward says that maybe they had gotten that job from France. Because Kath is the one that actually led them down that path and actually got them infested with the dark in the first place. Because of his own motivations, which we will go into much later. But that's that. Uh, let's see. Talk about that. Uh, I think I finished my thought in regards to Dark Souls and Miyazaki kind of not quite finishing everything that he wanted to. This is kind of an unfinished game in many respects. The, uh, this is not a female corpse, by the way. It's sometimes they use a, like, ever so often they'll use a female corpse, and other times they just kind of forget about it. I don't know, it's just, it's another example of the fact that this game is just not quite finished. Now, you can try to go back across that, but another kind of more reliably, you know, safer way, there's nothing over here. Uh, more reliable way to just, just go back up top and jump over to where the Firekeeper Soul was. But, dogs are over there because I already respawned everything. So I'll just end up standing there for the rest of the episode. But anyways, uh, that's it in regards to that, my notes. And I'm going to talk more about Blighttown. I did, however, want to talk a little bit about uh, kind of PvP and shields in general. Because I was that's what it was. I was trying to talk about the wood plank shield. There is one shield in Bloodborne that we know of. And it is basically just a shitty little wood plank shield like we just picked up. It's, a, it's basically a fuck you to 
people that <laughs> uh, play with shields, which I'm doing here. Uh, which, in Dark Souls, uh, using a shield is more mandatory. Like, there's a lot of things that you really can't deal with, especially well, unless you are using one. This is how you get back over here. You just jump over there. It's, it's, even though you take damage, it's a bit more safe than trying to walk across that rickety, glitchy pile of crap. Uh, but the problem I have with that whole problem is that, yes, it is a problem that in order to... That, uh, like, if you're using a shield, the only thing you have to do is just hit uh, L1, you raise your shield, and then you are invincible to everything unless you drain all your stamina. There's no real effort involved. There's no real thought or timing behind it exactly. And I agree. I agree that is a problem. And that's the reason why they transitioned from saying you can either play a tank or you can play someone that's very light and he ninja flips everywhere into saying, you know what, we're just going to design a game around speed. And that's what Bloodborne is. Like, everything in Bloodborne is just dodging. There is no tanking. There's no concept of just uh, tanking hits because that is, you can say, an easier way of playing the game. Although, on the other hand, it's, also, it's far more reliable to just dodge things in the sense that you have invincibility frames. Like, you don't get... Whenever you someone hits your shield, you get frozen into place. You lose stamina, uh, and you kind of you can't attack. Whereas if you're just ninja flipping everywhere, then your iframes take care of everything. It doesn't matter how many things are attacking you. It doesn't matter what your location is or what your position is, because nothing can hit you at all. So there's no interaction. The only thing you end up losing is just a little bit of stamina, which instantly recovers because you're playing a fast character. So, in many ways, actually playing a flightier character is in some ways much easier because it has less consequences if you succeed. So, it's, it's kind of weird like that. I don't know what the hell I was pointing at. I was trying to point at the uh, tree, I guess. I was going to talk more about Ash Lake or something. Um, but, the kind of the problem that I have, have with that is that you could easily fix tanking by kind of changing the way that parrying works and changing the way that blocking works. And making parrying not about hitting them with a one parry that makes them go into this repostable state in which they can't recover from. And they go, oh, I've been beaten. And then they just die. To, you know, if you parry someone, something like the attack continues, but you don't take any damage. But they take some stamina damage or something like that. So that it becomes more reliable. But it's not about you knocking their weapon away and parrying them. It's more about the fact that you're knocking their, you're deflecting their weapon, and you're able to counter with your own attack, which they can then parry. And the tanking system would end up being more about degenerating your poise or de degenerating your opponent's stamina to the point that you can get them into a uh, repostable state or a, a critical state, in which you can then down them. That's how more you would deal with the tanking uh, system. But Miyazaki at some point decided, you know what? Forget it. Just forget it. I'm not going to do that. They really like the way that pairing works as this end-all, be-all thing, and they kept that in Bloodborne to, to some extent. And they just ended up dropping tanking entirely and going completely to the idea that uh, you should just dodge everything, which I really don't like because I don't like playing games like that. And really, even this, like playing this kind of tanky build sort of that I'm doing right now, even I don't really like that. I much prefer trying to kind of parry things, and I like the idea of having good timing, but I also don't like the idea of timing everything around uh, dodging out of the way of things. So I'm kind of waiting for a Souls-type game that will never exist. The closest would be something like Lords of the Fallen, which is a piece of shit game, I'll go ahead and say it. Didn't like Lords of the Fallen for many various reasons, but one of those is the fact that they tried to slow down Souls gameplay without actually adjusting anything in regards to it. So you end up with even fewer options than you would have in a Souls game. Oh well. I might go a little bit more into that on how you can make a game like that with more options next time. But maybe not. I will try to concentrate instead on making a better Blight Town video so that I won't have to do post-con next time. But now I have to get back to eating babies. So I will see you little sluts next time. Thank you.